Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Cialdini, and I think you could tell from the title of my presentation that I want to talk about the concept of, of influence today. Right? And I know from writing a book on the topic, you can see I'm here in my office where I wrote that book. Actually, I'm not really in my office. There's a picture on a green screen of my office behind me. But while writing that book, I learned some important features about the influence process I'd like to tell you about today. First, there are multiple ways that we can try to influence people to move in our direction. We could pay them to do it. We could try to shame them into it. We could penalize them for failing to do it. We could even try to trick or deceive them into it. But all of those approaches have serious, significant costs associated with them. I'm going to recommend a separate approach, persuasion, that is wholly ethical, is entirely effective, and is almost entirely costless to us. Right? So let me define what I mean by persuasion. It's the ability to move others in our direction so that they're more likely to say yes to a request or a proposal or a recommendation we might make to them without changing the features or the merits of that request, proposal, or recommendation one bit, but only changing how we present those features, how we deliver the merits of our case. Now, my research tells me that there are six universal principles of influence and persuasion right, that move people in our direction and increase the likelihood that we will be successful in getting them to say yes. Here they are. Right? Reciprocation, liking and rapport, commitment and consistency, scarcity, authority, and consensus. Here's what I'll claim. If you include one or another in, of these principles into a message that you send, you will be significantly more successful. Now let me tell you something else about these principles. Right? Whenever I am presenting them person to person on stage, right? if, and it doesn't matter, how large or small the audience is, how it's composed, how it's constituted, if I ever say, this principle I'm talking about, let's say it's the principle of reciprocation, the first one we considered. If I ever say, you know, I'm going to give you now the smallest thing you could say or do to harness the enormous power of the influence process using the principle of reciprocity, the room goes silent. <laughs> Pens pause above pads, fingers poise at the ready over keys, and I get the audience's attention almost as completely as if I had mentioned sex. Now, these Small, these small things we can do produce that kind of reaction from the audience. Why? ROI is why. People want to invest the smallest they can in terms of energy or time and produce the biggest return in terms of their successes. Right? So, in all of the principles I talk about, I make sure that I include examples of small bigs, these practices that produce big returns for small investments. Right? Let's give an example of that in terms of the first of the principles of influence that I listed uh, a minute ago, the principle of reciprocation. Right? This is the principle that says 
We are obligated to give back to others the form of behavior they first give to us. And that's true, that rule is true in every human society. There's not a single human culture that fails to train its members in that rule. You must not take without giving in return. In fact, in every human language, we have very nasty names, don't we, for people who violate that rule, who take without giving in return. In English, we call them moochers, right? Or takers, or ingrates, or teenagers, actually, right? And none of us wants to be labeled like that. So we will all go to great lengths to give back to those who have first given to us. Now, let's flip the script and say your customers, clients, and colleagues will go to great lengths to give back to you if you have first given to them. Let's take an example from a, a candy shop in Southern California that used a small big to greatly increase their sales. They did an experiment for one week. For half of the customers who came in, the manager met them, greeted them warmly, and escorted them to the candy counter where they could make selections. That was for half. The other half, the manager greeted warmly and gave them a small piece of chocolate and then escorted them to the candy counter. That second group, were 42% more likely to buy candy. Now you might say, well, maybe that's just because they like the chocolate, right? If you look closely into the data, that wasn't the case, right? Most of them did not buy chocolate. They bought other kinds of candy. So what's the implication? The reason they made those purchases was not because of what they had received, it was because that they had received. This is very important. We will talk about this in greater length inside the principle of reciprocity. We'll use other small bigs to talk about the other principles. But for this one, what, what we will teach you inside that principle of reciprocity is the three things you can put into what you give first that causes the recipients to want to give back to you at the highest possible levels. They won't just be ready to give back to you, they'll be standing on the balls of their feet eager to give back to you at the highest possible levels. Right? So we'll do that in the larger presentation. Of course, this isn't that presentation. I hope, though, we will have the opportunity for me to present that larger presentation to you and your groups sometime in the future. Thank you very much for your kind attention.